debt of a software developer, debt of a software engineer. Who would have thought that in 2024, our video would start like this, right? I think we, uh, many of us who've been in this industry for so long, we got so spoiled, we thought that we're gonna, you know, remain, you know, indestructible, uh, immortal, undead forever, right? No chance that I, as a software engineer, the pearl of the industry, the rare breed, the basement dweller, you know, that uh, walks in the shadows, is gonna, you know, be hearing about layoffs and, uh, you know, ab uh, abdurance of, of, of work and jobs and stuff. Yes, that's what we're gonna discuss today. This video is named The Deaths of a Software Engineer and replaced by a rise of a product engineer. So today I want to share my thoughts uh, with you, uh, my thoughts that I, and experiences that I've seen from 2008 since I started professionally working to, to, to this day. And I'm going to share what I think is going to happen with our industry and where this industry is going. So if we go back maybe 20 years, 20 years ago in time or even 10 years ago, software engineers were very rare and very technical, very, our job was about code and performance and perfection and the patterns and uh, this, the, you know, design driven development, this driven development, or testing and this and this, right? We can see the trend, uh, we saw the trend changing maybe five to 10 years ago when JavaScript basically almost took the whole landscape uh, by the balls, right? Uh, we started building uh, mobile apps in JavaScript, uh, web apps, uh, video games, uh, I, Internet of Things, you know, uh, system level apps using Electron and stuff. When these uh, trends arise, which was amazing for the business, we saw a uh, massive neglect in uh, or massive decline in, in quality of software for the benefit of building, you know, products a lot faster. So, for example, uh, what you needed 10 to 15 people before to build, you know, a system level, system level app using Qt or C Sharp that, you know, worked on all platforms, Linux and Windows and Mac OS and Chrome. Suddenly now you had a technology like Electron JS where with two or three people, you can ship this thing you know, everywhere. Of course, this came with a cost of, you know, let's say Chromium being inefficient, you know, you build a front end app and it's like 100 megabytes or whatever. But, you know, businesses were fine with that because we focused on the product. So we moved from the engineering uh, technology centric thinking. to so like, how can we survive as a company, as a startup? And how can we ship this tool very fast with minim minimal amount of people? So we don't have to hire and, you know, salaries are very expensive, right? So, and this is, I think the time in my experience where uh, that of software engineers started and a rise or a birth of product software engineers started, right? So I've been talking about this for many years and I've been trying to tell developers that, hey, you know, your frameworks and your tools and your libraries are no, not going to be important as much as you think, you know, your social skills, your, your, uh, your uh, uh, consumer-centric approach is going to become way more important. And I was right, right? You can see today that if I'm hiring people for my team, for example, where I work, I will always seek, you know, seek to see how much do they care about the product, you know, uh, how focused are they on the, on the outcome. Outcome, when I say not outcome of their code, but outcome of the product that they build, right? So we have built something, we are autonomous team, we made decisions. What is the uh, outcome of the customers and the business? Are we making money? Are we losing money? Was this waste of time or not, right? And we can see as we go more and more forward that more and more companies today are product developer centric rather than let's write perfect code. Of course, this is not to say that these things are mutually exclusive. Of course, that I'm not suggesting write bad code or hire people that can't code, absolutely not. But if a business today is about to make compromises, they will always make compromises and say, well, screw it, we don't have to, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, prematurely optimize things and uh, cover a use case that can uh, handle, you know, 1 billion users while we have no users anymore. So in simple words, the, the that of software engineer as we knew came, that role is dead. Today we have product engineers and we have people who have to adjust their whole development cycle, their whole workflow around the value, around the customer, around very quick iterations, around 
10 different versions of a feature, version 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1.5, and then this drives us backwards to also uh, product management, project management, and how we even start accomplishing tasks. So for example, maybe 10 or 15, 20 years ago, we'd have this huge waterfall model or even agile model where we would have, you know, spent months researching the full feature, trying to find all the edge cases, trying to figure out every potential thing that can go wrong to, you know, let's build a minimal version that just works, see if the customers want it and et cetera, et cetera. And then if they do, let's build a version two, version three, version four. So of course, this again is a mindset of a product developer, not a software engineer that wanted to have a full-fledged, you know, a, 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 you know, technical document or whatever of what needs to be done. So in simple words, what does this mean for all of us? What does this mean for you, for me, for us software developers? You can be a junior, entry-level, tech lead, team lead, CTO. What, what, does, what does this mean for all of us, right? And this is my genuine advice. So if I'm to summarize these things that I, that I spoke about, it's that market is changing. There's a bunch of AI tools. Market is over is overly saturated. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of boot camps. There's a lot of self-taught people. Knowledge is not really in demand. You can become a doctor or a developer or a skier in, on, on YouTube in a year, right? So there's going to be a lot of people doing this job. So how can you differentiate yourself from others? Well, in very simple ways. So first of all, you can become product developer, not a software developer, right? You can become a person that's driven by making customers happy, making business happy. Of course, you can still enjoy writing code. Nobody neglects this or says you shouldn't, but your drive should be somewhere else rather than writing an API and thinking, wow, I'm so amazing, because you're not, right? Uh, any AI tool, any word, she, the, the most shittiest model today can write an AI to API, right? So let's not, let's not get lost in these, in these things because nobody cares anymore, right? Second thing is you can work on your social skills. So you can work on how you share your ideas, how you can, how you can, you know, persuade others into these ideas, how you can onboard them, how you can uh, basically just drive people around you. Right? Because if you want to ever go into management, if you ever want to get better in your career, at one point in time, it's going to be your emotional intelligence, your social intelligence that gets you there. It's not going to be, oh, I know six more frameworks than the other guy, right? Uh, the next thing, obviously, is going to be how well you network, right? So, so I wanted to say that before, you know, developers were uh, a gem, a gold, uh, you know, uh, a diamonds, right? Today, we need to behave a little bit differently. We need to, your, your every single interaction on LinkedIn, on the internet, anywhere, is building up your brand. Uh, you should treat yourself as a company, so not as an indiv individual that's, you know, going to in indefinitely be thrown uh, money at. You are basically a company, so make sure to behave like that. You have to be your own marketer, your own CEO, your own salesperson. And once you start treating yourself as a product in on the job market, I mean, better you're going to do. So make sure you have a good LinkedIn profile, programmer network profile, any profile, don't waste your time trolling on Twitter or YouTube or other platforms behind a fake name. Put yourself out there. Try to make every interaction a networking possibility, a possibility where you can gain uh, a respect of someone because you never know who that person that you in interface with every single day might be for you in the future. Today, you might talk to me on my Twitch channel when I'm live streaming. And I might be the one to be a reference for the next job and you might get the job exactly because of me. So treat yourself as a product and you're going to do a lot better. So this basically, in my opinion, is the future of our industry of programming. Uh, software engineering is that as we know it. Product engineering is here to stay. Uh, more, you're going to see more and more full stack positions as the time goes by. I, f I have a feeling that front end and back end positions are slowly going to evaporate. They're going to be merged into a single point, which is going to be a full stack. And these full stack developers are going to be called full stack product developers, most likely. And we're going to start stop making any differences because basically companies are going to be hiring product developers. These product developers might use different stack 
but it's gonna be very rare in my opinion that you're gonna have just this piece or that piece, like just back end or just front end and stuff. Anyway, that marks it for me today. I hope you guys learned some insights from this video. Uh, and if you did, please leave a like or whatever. And tell me, what do you think? Tell me, what do you think? Tell me what your experiences are. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye-bye.